Welcome back to Wood Turning with Dick. I've got a lovely piece of figured black limber. Now, Steve Eris sold this to me several months ago, and he's very keen that I make a nice vase out of it. Vase, vase, depending on where you come from. I don't want to do that. I told him he's not happy with me. He really wants me to make a vase out of it because of the nice size of it and the shape. But I'll just show you around. It's got a lovely figure in it. From what you can see from the various angles at the moment. Now, this side here is nice and square to the sides. This side here, a little bit off. So I'm just gonna trim it up. This is gonna work out quite nicely in what I want to make. It's slightly darker this side, slightly lighter this side as the grain progresses. That's actually really gonna, <laughs> that's gonna work. Little things and all that. Now, get that mounted up on the lathe. Let's round it down and have a little look at this figure. Interesting. Cool. Give me two secs. That's all flat spots got rid of. Loving these dark lines through here and through here. And that darker piece of wood there with the lighter, very highly figured here. You're not going to see it so well. Like you can see it in the camera. You really can. These lines coming across this way. Absolutely stunning. When that's sanded up, whoo, looking forward to that. Right, shaping. All I want to do here is round off the end to almost a, a half ball, this end. But I want a nice big, deep set chuck grip and outie. Square that end off, bring this distance down here by, I don't know, half inch, down to this bit, which will remain the same size. A nice flute this end. You will very shortly get a good gauge of what's going on. But initially, can you, you can't guess, coin. <laughs> I bet you, in your, whatever you're thinking, it's not, it's not what you think, unless you've already skipped to the end of the video and cheated. At the moment it's looking a bit like a bell. I promise you it's not. So we'll sort that end out and curve that over. That's from a chuck. Rather than the Axminster SK100, I'm going to use the original chuck that came with this lathe. It's got a nice deep set grips on here. You'll understand why later. But that'll go nicely on there and hold that nice and securely. Right now, trim that corner round. Any clue yet? It's not a bell, I promise you. See the edge of this here, the edge, of this, the edge of this dark, and the edge of that dark. I think that's gonna be, yeah, bear with. About halfway, about there. I can always move that. I'm putting that there to start damaging the wood and get, making a little hole. So, working to the edge of the dark there. Almost. Jackpot. Cool. Just do a nice light scribe around here. Okay. I'm going to bring it in about, mm, I don't know, that far. Let's adjust this later. I'm liking that. Can you see what it is yet? I don't need to, but I'll do it for your sake so you can see better. Just going to rough draw that pencil line in. On that one, very roughly drawn following that line. There's my hole, following that hole down straight. Center points about there. I want this bit too wide, don't want it too narrow. Oh, the nose piece is to be to be perfected. Might come slightly smaller with the eye slits. What do you think? No, do you know what? No, I think that works. Obviously, you can see what it is now, it's a helmet. I've just penciled that in just to get a really good feel of exactly where I want it. Because next, I think I'm going to draw some guideline holes for when I do cut this out. Because obviously I need to sand all of this. Then I need to cut all of it, all of it away. Then I've got to sand in between here. There's a lot of sort of off the lathe hand stuff. But for the time being, while it's still on the lathe, I can get a really nice finish on all this wood. If I mark myself some guide holes, I'm in a little bit. 
and drill down straight down in there with a small drill bit and that'll be the inside of the mask inside of the eye hole another one here and then when i cut it out i can cut on a curve gentle curve marker there oh no now that's the outside that's the inside bollocks So this piece of wood remains, this piece of wood remains. I can cut all that out clearly using the markers. But that's not just the marker, I need to drill into this piece of wood. But before I do that, let's mark off what I'm gonna do down the back. So how, how am I gonna find the halfway point and measure this up? That's a good question, Richard. And quite honestly, I don't know the answer, but let's have a think. I wanna measure from exactly this point here Looks like it's going to be in inches. Pull that tight. That's lovely. Exactly 14 inches. Right, that's good. We can work with that. I can work, I can work, I can work with 14 inches from the three. So 11 inches. Fine. I want five straps around the back here. Putting that tape nice and taut every inch line. Where you can see the holes, that bit's going to be cut out. Cut out. Oh, this whole section is going to be cut out. So it'd be like strands coming down here, which is essentially the neck protector, which then flare off at the bottom onto the shoulders. When I finish sanding it, when I finish hollowing it, I do need to cut all these pieces out. I've got numerous cutting things, but what I'm going to cut it on so I don't break them as I do it, am I going to use the Japanese saws? Maybe. Am I going to go dusty old school? That can definitely come off now. See, and no hole in the forehead. <laughs> I've got my top marker there. I'm just going to drill straight down as I can. My little marker. So when I do hollow it out, those holes go all the way through. Sorry, Steve, you're probably not enjoying this right this moment, are you? <laughs> there you go. Now I can cut out around those and I can finish all this. I don't have to worry about the pencil lines and the, the face mask and so on. The major worry I've got with this for me at the moment, just holding on the chuck, because I haven't got a lathe steady for this lathe that's this big and I can't be bothered to make one. So I'm gonna be a little bit dodgy, as you know I have been in the past, and I'm gonna hollow this out with that just holding on the chuck. Once that's all done, if I manage to do it without it coming off, I then need to put this in the button jaws, which might be dodgy as well, because it's quite a long way out. And I'm not sure one should be doing that. And this lathe hasn't got a big enough bed to go have the tailstock pressed up against here, which I don't want anyway, because that's the top of the helmet. I need to take that off very carefully with the chisel while it's in the button jaws. It's actually a reasonably soft wood. I can feel the grain as some bits have dipped as I've been sanding it. And if you run your fingers over it, I can just feel a slight boom -bidi, boom -bidi, boom where the grain changes. Not a problem, because I realised it fairly early on and then very carefully sanded it rather than sort of rushed through it and pushing too hard. You can see a tiny bit of shimmer in here at the moment. When I put some of this on, let's see the difference. It's not half bad, you know. Once that's all polished up, that's going to look lovely. Now, Steve, I'd use oil for the very final finishing. There's elements of it I'm going to need to gild, and the gilding ain't going to stick to the oil. So, no oiling on this, mate. It is lovely, that colour, that vein going through there. I think I might. This is really nice, light, very light brown with that black strip running down, dark brown strip running down it. I think I might do another one of these, similar size if I can find the piece of wood. Ah, bog oak. So I think that would look really cool. You'll see what I mean at the end. You'll be like, ooh, yeah, why not a bog oak? It would look really cool too. I agree with your dick. Or Richard, or whatever you want to call me. And give that a chance to dry. Then I've got the bit I cut off. I glued on a spare chuck grip last night, and so that's nice and dry. You can see the glue's all gone off, lovely. So I am going to chuck that on the other lathe. I turn that round, and that's going to be my base. You'll see. Should I add a bit of shape? I mean, it's going to look just like a bowl blank on the bottom otherwise. Yeah, do you know what? Let's keep it simple. 
Bowl blank as a base, that's fine. I've denived the sand of sealer. Think about hollowing it out. Now, I think a force and a bit is probably a good idea. Busy hollowing this out with this my one-lined carbide, and it reminds me why I don't do vases and vases. That's a lot of material to shift out of there, and it makes your neck ache. It's just not fun. Uh, I much prefer bowls and arty farty pieces. So while I'm here, while I've got it as hollowed out as I have, what I want to do is put an eight mil drill down through the bottom there. Not all the way through, just enough to put one of my stainless steel rods on, as I like to do. That was hard work, and my ne neck is stiff from all the bending over. You can't see greatly how deep that is, uh, but it, essentially it comes down to about there. Now, I've got this wall thickness, I believe, fairly even. Slightly thicker at the top, leading down to a, a nice sharp bottom. And then, the advantage of these holes, of course... I poke that in there. Yeah, I can see it come through there, so I can put my finger on the inside and know how thick the walls are. Ha <laughs> ha! Genius! That lovely dark transition there, gorgeous. Looks like storm clouds, or kind of a small mountain range. <laughs> I rather love that. Put a bit of wax on it. Sorry, Steve, not oil. Final bit of sanding, you can see some sanding lines here. That'll happen in a minute on the button jaws, <laughs> which is going to be fun. But in the interim, just look at this shimmer. That's glorious. I mean, yes, it would look nice in a vase, vase. And yeah, it probably would have been better with oil, but the wax does a very good job too. And the difference between fully sanded and wax is just incredible. What I'm not particularly looking forward to is all the cuttings. The cuttings and then the sandings. The sand, the cutting, I'm looking forward to because it's, <laughs> I've not done it like this before. Well, this looks almost comical. And just a little note to uh, the YouTube self-appointed safety police. Yeah, I'm not recommending this. So you guys can rest easy and not post me a nasty message saying, never do this, it's not safe, don't do it. Um, because I'm doing it. I'm not recommending it to people. And I'm going to make very shallow light cuts on the end of this, not putting too much pressure. I'm just going to round that around there. So, yay. Wish me luck. Because of the vibration here, you can see this nice spiral pattern. I'm gonna get the rest of this with sandpaper and just bring that nice and round and sand it and wax it. So this is where the fun begins. There is my helmet. There's my face mask. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try this out down here without cutting into this, without digging into the, the back bit as the saw cut goes through. Help me with that, a couple of those pads, stuff those in there, hopefully prevent me from hitting the wood on the other side. Without further ado, let's get cutting. Woo, first cut made. And the next one. Let me get a few more of these cut and I'll come back to you in a sec. Now to hand sanding it all, joy. That I'll be able to use for something else. Probably gonna make a nice mask or something out of that. And there it is. The only thing left to do now is to wax it. I've hand sanded all of this, and then it's off to Lenore for some gilding. A nice stainless steel rod here, go into the base. Where's the base? 
There's the base. Lovely. Now, I'm thinking, rather than having it straight up, I'm gonna have the helmet at a slight angle. So I just need to put a bend in the stainless steel. So, no, I did it already. <laughs> I'm only teasing. Um, so that will slide in there. Unfortunately, I did use a nine mil bit in, the, <laughs> stupidly. We all make mistakes. I, I use a nine millimeter drill bit for my eight millimeter rod. It's a little bit loose in there, but a little bit of tape around that and glue in the hole and then set it in the right position, that'll be fine. So this will be the front, obviously because the dark is at the front of the helmet here. See this is slightly darker here. I wanna keep that all in line and that will sit on top of there, but not just yet, because one, I wanna glue that in, two, it needs to be loose so Lenore can get around and gild all of this. I'm not entirely sure exactly what she's gonna be gilding. Should be interesting when it's finished. I do somewhat live for comments, so please do leave me a comment. I do like to see what you're thinking and what you thought of it and the process, the video, the finished product. Yeah, be good to hear from you. Well, colour me impressed. Back from the gilding, I glued the top on, tied up most of the little loose bits of gold. Yeah. I like that. Pleased. Well chuffed. Thanks for watching.